Welcome, everybody, to the Kona Shane Veterinary Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Andy Work. Guys, I am here today with the one and only Dr. Lisa Radasta. Uh, we are having a conversation about multi cat aggression or inner cat aggression, uh, I should say. But yeah, we start breaking down. I sort of set up a, a little case with, with three cats and then just kind of open to her. And again, I. I love having Dr. Radasta on the program. She is so fun and she tells great stories and she's just a wealth of information. And man, she's linked into all kinds of resources in this podcast. I put them all in the show notes. Uh, definitely hit the notes. Take a look at, uh, at all the stuff that's there. But man, this is, a, this is a great episode. Let's get into it. This is your show. We're glad you're here. We want to help you in your veterinary career. Welcome to the Cone of Shame with Dr. Andy Rourke. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Lisa Radasta. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy having you here. Uh, You've been a regular on the podcast. I, um, you are, for people who don't know, you are a boarded uh, veterinary behaviorist. You are the owner of Florida Veterinary Behavior Service. Um, you are an author of so many things, um, from uh, from Fearful to Fear Free, which is one of your uh, books. You've just uh, you're, you've you've written for uh, the uh, clinical handbooks. You just you have you have so much that you put out, and you're such a source of wisdom. I just I so enjoy our conversations. So I. I wanted to, to come to you with a case, uh, and, and I, I just, I'll sort of lay it out, but, but I want to get a general refresher on this topic because I've, I've seen it recently. I want to make sure that my, my game is, uh, is, a, is on point here. So I have got, uh, I've got a client, and she has three cats, and they are getting in fights. And so one of the cats is new, or is new-ish, but, uh, but she has these three cats, and I just wanted to go ahead and start to get your take on apartment living, three cats, newish cat is not getting along. It's not all out war. And it's just kind of one of those things where they're having fights. But it's, 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 I let's say the cat's new ish is because it hasn't been, it wasn't like, here's the new cat and it's World War Three. It has been, at first it was okay. And then, then it was not. And then it kind of was okay for a while. And just every now and then they're, they're, they're getting into it. And so can we, can we talk a little bit about inner cat aggression? Is that okay? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Three cats. Is that a normal? Does that change how we approach this as opposed to two cats? Let's just start there. Look, it makes it more uh, complicated, but it doesn't change our approach. So number one, well, here's what's generally going to happen, at least in my experience, is they're going to bring you one cat. Yep. And they're going to the say, the, Fluffy. The villain. The villain. It's always Fluffy XYZ. So you have to try, and I, and I have I remember sitting with this elderly man. He was a, you know, sometimes you sit with these older people and they're just a hoot. He was just a hoot. And every time he roadblocked me, he would do it with a big smile on his face. So then with a big smile on my face, I would explain to him why he's wrong. It was just a fun appointment. It was an inner yeah. session appointment. But anyway, so they have these ideas. So the first thing I say is, okay, well, here's the thing. It takes two to tango, right? And most likely, at least in my experience, if you have arguments, both cats are involved. If there's three cats arguing, three cats are involved. So here's what they'll say. Well, when I put cat one up, nobody argues and everybody gets along. It must be cat one. And I said, well, cat one changes the dynamic enough, right? But cat one may not be the person, the cat, who's causing the problem. All right. So that's the first thing is we say, okay, just so you know, Ms. Jones, I'm going to need to see all the cats. Okay. okay. And the first step in every behavior appointment, I do not care what the presenting complaint is. I do care, but not for this talk, is to work the cat up. Okay. Cats don't tell us when they're sick. So you're going to have to get a needle out. You're going to have to draw some blood. You may have to take some x-rays, send them to the, uh, what is that, the, the Zoetis Silencia website where they show the cats jumping. Yeah. You know, this love this website. I don't know if I'm allowed to say products, but sure. I no, do love yeah. that site. Because the clients then can see, and they, and one client videoed her cat doing all of the, every single activity, sent them to me so I could see it. It's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, the point is, I look for pain. I look for systemic disease. Because maybe these cats were getting along in the beginning. Somebody's sick. Someone's irritable. Someone's acting differently. So everybody's going to need a workup, okay? A lot of clients will push back and say, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. And I just tell them about my experience. I've been sure. And then I treated a case through about eight months. 
and I couldn't resolve the case. And you know why? Because as a doctor, I didn't push hard enough for that lady to bring in her other cat because the other cat needed a workup too. I said, so I'm going to give you the best I can give you. And that's everybody coming in, everybody getting a workup. So that's the first step. Clients will bring you because they bring their phone, right? Videos and pictures. Okay, this is what I love. Do you ever watch like the home improvement shows, and you know when they they pull back the the big barrier and they see the house, and the person goes, ah, "Yeah, God, right? this is it." So then they pull out their phone. She pulls out her phone, and I say, "Okay, show me the pictures." This just happened to me. So because she, she was sure, she brought me the aggressor. I'm like, okay, yeah. And so then the first picture is both cats sitting in the meatloaf position. So everybody's defensive. Both of them in a bright room, widely dilated pupils. And I went, "Oh my God!" And she goes. Ah, what? And I go, they're both scared. And she goes, no. I'm like, yes. And she goes, oh, I can't believe it. I'm like, yes. So, so then she- You were practicing like a soap opera. I, I, I would is. just come and watch you work. It is. So then she flips to the next one. I'm like, oh, that tail, this video, that tail's thumping. That cat's agitated. She goes, it is? I'm like, yes, it is. So once you see the pictures, if you know anything about body language and you might have a technician, a nurse, a doctor's assistant, who knows a lot about body language, right? Once you start showing the client, there's the proof. That's the radiograph, okay? That's the MRI. You're showing the proof on her phone that everybody's involved. Now she's coming in, right? So that's step one. Yeah. Do you have resources you really love for body language to for pet owners who want to learn more about yeah. it? So if you go to my profile on Instagram or Facebook, you go to the profile, there's link trees. There's a link tree for cat resources, a link tree for dog resources, link tree for vets. So then you will see, like I update that all the time. I grab stuff from all over the place and stick it onto that link tree. So there's everything from body language to uh, carrier training, like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. So yeah, the thing is we want to educate people We want to be preventative. I know we're talking about treating, but what people need to know is about 50% of cats show some sort of conflict when they fight. So that's number one statistic we want to put into our veterinary brains. Cat is coming into you, first appointment. You've never seen this cat, just adopted, okay? Into a family, a current client who has cats. You want her to know 50% of cats have an argument. And I want to tell you what an argument looks like. Ears back, tail thumping, hissing. Because what they'll say is, they weren't swatting, they weren't biting, they weren't chasing. That's good, but that's the end. That's the end of that spectrum. At the beginning of the spectrum is ears back, tail thumping, hissing. So when you see that, think of that as conflict. That means you don't want to go farther with the introduction. And what they need to know is 35% of those cats are still fighting at least once a week, a year later. Wow. So we have to, as vets, go, here's the thing. If you saw any of those signs, we got to go super, super slow. Maybe you need a cat trainer, right? Maybe you need to follow this handout that I've written for you or that that I have, like our textbook, our new textbook has handout in it for introduction. Actually, I think it's on my website. So um, follow that exactly. Because if you start the cats off right, the likelihood you're going to be here in a year for fighting is a lot lower, you know? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in real quick and let you know I have a secret. Uh, I have something that is coming for you that is really wonderful. As you know, I, I love to have fun. I love to facilitate teams learning together and laughing together and getting to know each other. Um, I like to make things that are kind of zany and off the wall that will bring joy into practice. And guys, my team has been working so hard on something very special for you. It's not a webinar. It's not a conference. It's not an event. It's not a summit. It's not a training program it is something entirely different. And so I just want to give you a quick heads up that uh, that there's uh, there's something exciting coming down the pipes. If uh, if you want to get the inside scoop, you can hunt around the drandywork.com website or some of my emails and see if you can find the question marks. Uh, look for the, some question marks and that will link you up to some information and some clues. And you can start to make your way towards figuring out and finding out what I got for you. But anyway, it's going to be something really fun and really exciting. I can't wait to share more with you soon. Now, let's get back into this episode. Okay, 
I love the idea of, of getting in the phones. I love the videos. I love working up the cats, things like that. How do you start to, you, when, when we, you and I had talked in the past about it and you had made a distinction between the sort of the two different drivers of cat aggression. Do you want to sort of start there as, as far as how you, how you wade into these? Yeah. So you've got the cats who, a new cat's introduced into the home and there's conflict. And that conflict can be over anything. Could be one cat is fearful. It could be one cat is not well, one or more. It could be that the resources in the house aren't plentiful enough, et cetera, et cetera. And the way we educate those clients looks really different than the way we educate the second group of clients. Those are clients whose cats, these are often litter mates, not always, but often, that get along really well. I mean, they sleep in a pile of cats, which is one of our, one of the ways we figure out if cats are actually BFFs, right? So, uh, and then they're in a situation where one cat gets really scared and redirects aggressively toward the other and the relationship is forever changed. When I see that second group of cats, at least in my practice, way better prognosis because a couple of reasons. They had a good relationship prior. They mm-hmm. had something to go back to, right? And also because usually clients get them to us pretty quickly because they're shocked at what's happening. It feels urgent because of the change in the behavior. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. so. Um, from a, you know, we talked about, I love the idea of setting the expectation. This is, this is going to take time. This is going to be a, a process. Is there anything else you do to sort of set up expectations like that at the beginning? Yeah. So th- one of the first things we do is educate. Here's how cats live. If you ever had a barn or a barn cat, which I did, you pour out the food and the cats come together, right? But then the cats scatter and you notice the ones that are hanging out together look the same. Bunch of mm-hmm. ginger cats, bunch of tuxedo cats. Right? Why is that? Because cats live in matrilineal colonies. So I tell the client, look, the moms and the sisters and the aunts and the grandmas, they all live together and they take care of each other's babies. But God help you if you're another cat and you're not related and you try to come in to that group because they're going to be aggressive toward you. So let's normalize that what your cats are doing, normal. Right? Let's also normalize that they're not sisters, they're not family, they're roommates, but you did not ask them. If they wanted a roommate, you just got another cat, right? So yeah. let's first empathize for the kitties. That's the first thing. The second thing, it depends on the situation. The situation is really bad. So if I say, like, seek and destroy, cat sees other cat, goes after it, then I'm going to explain to them that this is going to be a challenge. Yeah. These are ways we can treat this. We can separate. We could separate forever. You could live with your cats separated. That is the cheapest thing to do. That is what your cats want. And you will divide your time and your cat's time will be divided. Number two, we can medicate and manage them. They can be together when you're there to interrupt them. Um, All across the board, of course, we're going to do environmental enrichment. That's a given. Mm -hmm. And then the third option is to do behavior modification with a cat trainer. That's going to be done virtually almost 100% of the time. That is going to be six months of your time. You're going to meet every two weeks. And I just want you to know that a lot of times after six to eight months, the cats relapse and have a fight. So I want you to think about this as marriage counseling. I don't know if you've ever been to any sort of relationship counseling. It's just how I talk to people. And you you have to tell me that you have. But what I can tell you is that, you know, that's not a fix. Sometimes those those people are triggered again and they fight Mm -hmm. again, right? So your cats are going to be in that situation too. So whatever you do is up to you. I'm here to be a part of the solution. Here's the options. Yeah, that makes sense. I always ask about environmental enrichment because I I think it's so useful and it's so often overlooked by pet owners and it's just, it does so much for the quality of life of of cats. What are your, uh, what are your go-tos for feline environmental enrichment? What do you, what do you love? Well, there's a book called The Indoor Cat which is a great, great book that is all about enrichment. That's all that the authors um, write about in that book. So I tell clients to get that. Of course, I send them to our resources. But here's what here here's the troubleshooting point, because I think the veterinarians and the veterinary nurses and technicians, technicians listening to this podcast have a lot of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Where's the troubleshooting? When you say, I want you to enrich the environment, first of all, I was shocked when I got a follower on Instagram who emailed, who, who DM me to say, what is enrichment? I yeah. had done like five posts on enrichment. What is it? So watch your lingo. People don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does your cat have stuff to do? 
And then here's the next thing they say. Yes. Oh, my cat's got a toy box full of toys. My cat doesn't need anything. And I say, okay, you got to break through that challenge. That challenge is coming. So either you break through it by getting ahead of it, which is what I try to do to say, one thing we need to do is enrich your cat's environment. Enrichment is giving your cat stuff to do and engaging all five senses. And I know because you're here that you're an amazing cat pet parent. I know because your butt is in that seat that you got a full toy box full of cat toys. And I also know that my husband is going to walk into my closet tomorrow and say I have enough black high heel shoes and he will be wrong. Right? <laughs> because he will think I'm plenty and rich, but shoe wise, I'm not. And your cat isn't either. So that is the way I talk to them. So now they have a smile on their faces. Now they're like, oh, that's funny. So then we talk about the five senses. And we talk about rotation. Your cat is so smart. And he's got the same toys in front of him every day. That is no fun, right? So we're yeah. going to rotate. Three toys in the drawer, bring out three new toys every day. Plus, there's the toys that he has in his box. I tell them my three-step process for finding what your cat loves. Number one, you go on to whatever your search engine is. You Google, let's say, um, cat toys. And you just spend an hour shopping. You spend your budget for that month, okay? And then you get those in the mail. And then you log with your pen and paper on your phone what your cat played with. And you write down the exact characteristics in detail. Month two, spend your budget on only toys that have those exact characteristics. Repeat. By month three, you will have what your cat likes and go forward from there, rotating and keeping it new and fresh for him. Yeah. Oh, I love it. That's amazing. Are there any uh, common pitfalls that you see? Are there any mistakes that I should look out for any, anywhere that I, that I mess this up or, or, or make my life harder? Yeah. I mean, the clients, it's, it's every part of our, of our job. They, they push the limits too soon. I, I didn't give all the cephalexin. I don't think we use cephalexin. You could tell me because I don't do skin anymore, but I didn't give all the antibiotic. My dog looks yeah. pretty good. Right? Yeah. Like, so it's good enough we stopped. Yeah. It's good enough we stopped. So what we're going to see is the cats are going to be fine behind the closed door. So the client's going to call you or email or text you and say, I open the door. I just wanted to see. Right? And But the problem is, and this is what I have to explain to them, the problem is that that one negative, it takes me a thousand positives to outweigh that one negative. Yeah. So you can't break the rules. And we did it this time. We're going to let it go. But you can't break them in the future. Yeah. That makes, that makes total sense. Oh, man. Dr. Lisa Radasa, you are amazing. Thank you so much for being here and talking through this with me. I always enjoy our time together. I have got a ton of links I'm going to be putting down in the show notes uh, so that people can go and find. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to put you a link to your, uh, to your website. Um, are there any other resources? Talk a little bit about your social medias. Uh, you're, you're clearly, uh, you're active on Instagram. Where, where can people find you? Yeah, at Dr. Lisa Radasta is where you'll find me. And um, we post on everything behavior, like everything behavior, little digestible bites, dogs, cats, you know, we're living and breathing it. You know, I love it. Sounds great. I will put, uh, I will add those links as well. Guys, thanks for being here. Take care of yourselves, everybody. And that is it, guys. That's what we got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of the episode. Thanks so much to uh, Dr. Lisa Radasta for being here. Thanks to you for being here and listening. Um, yeah, if you like the podcast, do me a favor. Uh, leave me an honest review wherever you get your podcast. It means the world to me. Anyway, that's all I got. Gang, take care of yourselves. Be well. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>